you are not going to have success if you turn over players consistently. It's just not going to happen. I think England just have to be, again, spot on, word perfect, win 80% of the aerial battles, 50-50 balls on the floor, um, shut down that line out. The Twickenham crowd is a hair trigger. Yeah. They are ready to go after this team if they don't start well and keep going well. And that will be a negative. That will be, be an issue for them because that gets in on teams. England beat Ireland on the weekend. We've had a great season. I mean, because it's what a scalp. Hello, Dream Team. Welcome along to this week's episode of The Good, The Band and Rugby. Hope you're well. In partnership, as always, with our very good friends at Continental Tyres. No tins and no hass this week. So we have raised the rugby IQ with two of my learned friends from <laughs> yesteryear. Uh, Shane Horgan and Will Griffith. Very nice to see you. Shaggy squared, some yeah, might say. we had an argument in 05, didn't we, about... <laughs> you could have it. <laughs> <You're welcome. laughs> yours, was, like yours, nickname. yours was because of Scooby-Doo. Yes. Because you look like... Yeah, I had curtains, classic. Yeah. Uh, Durham University, Didn't we all? curtains, red cords, that sort of stuff. Yeah, and, that and cowardly, and cowardly as well. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah. yeah. But top of the list. <laughs> Smoking <laughs> a lot of weed as well. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, ask you why you were yeah, no, at yeah. university days as well. No, no, it wasn't. It was. Do you know, I never had it growing up. And then, of all people, David Humphreys, the new yeah. high performance director in uh, I IRFU, uh, I was on a combined provinces game to play South Africa in. The, maybe it's 98 or 99 well, maybe the 98. big one the big <laughs> one it was such a big one for yeah. me and um um i was you know i was, it was late it was my late teens so i was properly scruffy and i was like always half asleep and yeah. then i was shaggy and that was it yeah and i never liked it right <laughs> You were always quite boho back in the day, weren't you? You were quite, <laughs> quite, you were quite thespy at times. There was a lot of sort of rouge collars <laughs> going on in your dress sense. No, I mean, uh, yeah, and that's the only way that I have anything yeah. in that line at all. Yeah. yeah, Very nice to have you both in. We are going to get very stuck into England Ireland this weekend. We'll have a look at the other fixtures as well. But before we get into sort of what is to come, how do you reflect on games against Ireland? I've got stats in front of me here. Will Green had played five, won three, lost two. And Shane was involved in both of them. Shane will have clearly some opinions about those games. I think 01, that was I, I up, remember very few games. I remember the ones I lost, and I was lucky enough to play an England team. We didn't lose that many games. Yeah. Ireland were front and centre, and a couple of games we got turned over in Paris front and centre, and they're the ones that you never want to go back and play again, but they just niggle away at you a little bit. <laughs> 01, uh, Lions... Four games, crushed everyone, winning by 50 points, foot and mouth, appropriately cancelled. Lands takes place, I'm one of the four or five snap all ankle ligaments, don't play in any tests, destroys my summer. Um, two or three others came back and we actually had a massive lesson. We went with, and I hope this is taken in the context of looking back at it, we went with players who weren't 100% fit. And you went round the back there, Keith round the back of the line out, scored, Got stored. It was like being stuck in a washing machine. We couldn't get anything, anything right. A um, few different combinations. No warm up game. Remember, these guys had gone up to Murrayfield, <laughs> got, got destroyed, got battered in yeah. their first away game. We went to Ireland, and it was one of those games that what just happened there. Um, wow, we walked into something, and so I'll always look back at that one and just go, we, we got preparation wrong. We got selection wrong. We had a little bit of misfortune. I'll always view that if we played in March in the form we were in, my version of events would be we would have won a slam, but that's not how it played out. Um, I remember that game. Well, I remember most from that game is being so incredibly nervous before it because Jason Robinson was against me on the other side. And I, <clears throat> I don't think it happened to me twice in my career where I rang up a coach. I rang up Matt Williams, who's my coach yeah. in Leinster, and who I now work with actually in Ireland, um, and said, "You know, what am I going to do with this uh, this guy?" Because you should have rung me. I didn't. We didn't have a clue either. <laughs> <laughs> because it was, uh, and the other one was Lomu when I played against Lomu. Who did you two. ring to ask that question? Oh, yeah, yeah, Matty Williams. You rang Matt yeah, Williams. Yeah, yeah, because well. actually, so we were coming from Ireland where there was no. Do you remember when there was no defensive system? Do you remember yeah, that? Yeah, you just turn up and have a go. He would just tackle, you know. And then Matt came over from from the Waratahs and implemented the defensive system. And we were like, this this is sorcery, you know. This, this guy is <laughs> what well, witchcraft. Oh is yeah, this? what is this, you know? And it was it was phenomenal. So, you know, he was from in my mind, you know, a guru, you know. So I rang him up, but um, um, it was because I thought. 
playing against Jason Robbins, it wasn't just that, you know, we might lose. It's that he could humiliate you in such a way that you might never play rugby for Ireland again. Right. Honestly, and Louis yeah. was the same. That was that's why they could end careers. Um, and and was it more so on the wing? Yeah. In the centre, you can sort of hide and go, yeah. well, you didn't drift, I drifted, what were you doing there? And there might be a collective responsibility. Yeah. Good. On the I, wing, you're on. I've on the wing, you're in. on your own. <laughs> I've drifted past the sideline a couple of times. <laughs> Keep on going. But uh, he's he said the same thing to me in both both circumstances, which is like sort of maybe damning with with, with faint praise. He said, "Don't. There's nothing you can do if they get the ball. <laughs> Just don't let them get the ball." Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a bad plan. Who did you find harder to handle, Robinson or Lomé? Robinson didn't play that well that day, actually. Right. Bizarrely, you know. And he's for me, he was like an absolute phenomenon. That's two two best wingers ever played against. Um, he, they didn't. You didn't get the ball particularly yeah. wide, so there wasn't. It wasn't that big. In it. He had a bag in it. We were poor that day, really poor. Yeah. They thoroughly deserved to win. Uh, crowd go crazy. Festa scores. Great. Try. Everything. Yeah, everything we try goes wrong. It was just. It was a little bit like Murrayfield for England in the second half. You just, even the good sides, you get caught. You get caught on days like that. And uh, and Dan was it Dan Luger that was true and Stringer. That's oh, right. yeah. what yeah. a tap yeah. tackle yeah. that was! That, that was a game. That's up there with mm. tackles. I remember. I saw Jamie Roberts recently against you lot. You ran an inside play and Tommy Bowes in under from a scrum plate and I have no idea he was like who was the character in Matrix who could bend Neo he was like ne I don't know how he made that tackle so you remember certain tackles Josh Lucy's tackle on Matty Rogers uh, Lucy on Davilius in the uh, corner Benny Cohen on the all black fullback who was running up the left ben hand Blair. Side. Ben Blair mm -hmm. just you remember certain instances but Stringers absolutely yeah. one, one key moment in the game yeah, we scored N we might I don't think I don't think we would have won if you had scored no? then yeah. um, and then 04 we had that was post World Cup, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, and it might, this conversation might open up to the current England team, and uh, they, because I don't have as much of a footprint in today, I'm coming in here tough on issues, soft on people. Don't push me for names. <laughs> don't push me for who you drop. But I'm going to come in here with themes. Yep. Um, I do stand by the fact that in '03, that night, maybe it would have been a bit cruel that night, but three or four weeks later, Clive could have come to four or five of us, and I, by the way, I'm front and centre here, and go, thanks, dude. Heck of a heck of an innings, but uh, just Jono's walked, you know, clever geezer's gone, <laughs> yeah. and he could probably get another four years. You, I think you got six more weeks in you. <laughs> uh, you're done, son. And it was because I was someone who was always, couldn't believe skinny guy was playing for England, I was always going to keep turning up if you keep getting picked. Yeah. Uh, I should never have been picked again. I look back on it and go, uh, my old man spotted it. He said, your legs have gone, haven't you? About middle of 04. And, yeah. and what, were you doing, what were you doing on the Lions in back in 05? I was going to say, as a test line in 05. <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. Well, everyone was dead by that <laughs> stage, yeah. weren't they? There was I, the... was, I was sitting on the bench, put me in. <laughs> that was an interesting selection, that 05. Yeah. I what thought was Darts the was going to play. What was no, the... I think there was a real loyalty. But actually, there are. I think there are definite parallels between um, that that sort of match in, 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 in 2004 and, and somewhat. It's a little bit unfair to that team because that team were like, generational phenomenal team yeah. but i don't know if you agree but you weren't and i said this in the, in the paper at the weekend i don't think you were you guys were at your peak at that world cup i think you were at your peak slightly before it probably 2001 better. actually that you know, march you know slightly yeah. before now you were obviously good enough to win the world cup but you were i don't think you were at the, your maximal as a team and then that's why the so the collapse happened really quickly afterwards. And if you and want to write a book on collapsing, send them send England on a tour to New Zealand and Australia, yeah. like playing European Cup, like you, everyone else would have been doing a week after the World Cup final. Yeah. yeah. Then going to Six Nations, where absolutely everyone wants to come and bat you and go, well, like, World Cup, World Champions, whatever, we'll have you, and got turned over by France over at their place. Nearly yeah. got nearly got humbled over there. Had a good second half combat that stopped a thirty pointer. Uh, and you guys probably in the end won relatively comfortable. I don't. Uh, uh, Benny Cohen scored at left hand side, double movement, bang, gone, disallowed. And then Dem Dempsey, given Dempsey scored. Yeah, Dempsey scored. At the left, yeah, we were chasing scored. shadows back end of the second half. You were dancing to a different beat, young, enthusiastic, yeah. hungry. And I, we were slightly shell shocked. And that was the first time we'd lost. I mean, massive credit. For, we, first time we'd lost since 99. Yeah. Twicken, yeah. we'd gone five years and but, rolled everyone. But I, I think unreal. if you look at the England team, um, you're holding the England team now, both for right or for wrong, you know, it should be a new development cycle, right? And instead he said, I'm going to get through the World Cup with, with the players that yeah. I have there and play this more sort of pragmatic way, can't change things up. 
I actually think that's fair enough. Do you know, we may, maybe he made the right decision there, but it means that he's got more to do. And he has to do it during the Six Nations. And they're kind of, you know, he, he has to make significant changes. Yeah. And they haven't bedded in. And it's really early in the development cycle. Your team in 2004 were holding on and actually should have started a new de development cycle. Yeah. Say, and they didn't. And, you know, were compromised as a result. And you contrast that to Ireland. So our Ireland team at that time were young lads coming off the back of a World Cup. All right, we didn't. We only got to like a, a, a quarter final as every Irish team has done. But actually, we were on the upward curve, yeah. and we were like we were comfortable, and we were ambitious, and and you know sort of passionate, and and it sort of made sense that we were going on the, on the way up. And the Irish team now are just completely comfortable, having had a disastrous World Cup. But they it wasn't the end of a cycle for them. Yeah. If you look at the age profile of the players. It, 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 you know, it wasn't their last hurrah that they had to get to that milestone. It, it was kind of mid-career. And they've just moved on seamlessly yeah. as a result. Three quick stories from 05, I sure in. That one, Lions. we always thought we were 05 Lions. Oh, my God, the intelligence levels of the Irish backs on that. There was Hickey and Darcy, yourself. It took it took the chat at the back of the bus to a different level for some of our English players who moved further forward. Who wrote <laughs> the said, learned yeah. friends to it. Two... I don't think we can say what Steve Walsh called you yeah. against oh, Taranaki. <laughs> so Steve Walsh was running the touch. I remember that. Steve Walsh was running the touch. Of course Out we were blue. away. What we did he call you? Taranaki. We called him the sea bomb Yeah. As the as for looking the in the game, what the did you done? What no. I had, I, I think I was appealed. Away, you. No, I know no, exactly. No, what I know. I appealed. I appealed for a for a for a, a line out. I think me. Yeah. He was. Well, yeah, was totally, he uh, obviously had something in his head, not just about me, but about lions because he was. You know, the bloke was two yards in touch. It was Jack, I was stood next to you. I was yeah. on the inside. <laughs> of the you go. He, you he, go in touch, and he goes. You can't say that to me, you see, bomb Like, whoa, yeah. aren't you an international referee? Yeah, it was is it, is it not he who controls himself controls the game on the inside of the forearm? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. my other favourite one was, I actually, my, my last pass in international rugby was a try-scoring pass. was, yeah. To yeah. who? Who was it? Let me think. Got it. Uh, Dougie Howlett. No. Rico Gear. Rico Gear. Rico Gear. Gear. But it was right, meant yeah, to be yeah. to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you were on the left-hand yeah. side. I've got to, everyone has oh, what a show yeah. saying his last pass in international. You know I knew Ronan was a friend. You know how I knew he was right. a friend? Because he chased him. Oh, and there's God. no way. I mean, remember that Castro game? Remember that Castro game yeah. when he made an intercept against Cast for Leinster? Yeah. And he's, he's got a 50-yard start, and he hits the 22, and he hit the greatest <laughs> travelator I've ever seen. <laughs> Watching him chasing Rico under the post at Eden Park was, Rod, do you know what? I'll, I'll, I remember you trying for what, me. What was the back line that finished that third test for the, for the British and Irish? I know the midfield. Slowest international midfield to ever take the field of rugby. Yeah. Because uh, it was me, uh, Ronan O'Gara and Stephen Jones was at it? 10, 12, 13. <laughs> um, I mean, wow. Great days. Cueto, <laughs> Cueto was on the right wing. Yeah. Or maybe I came on for him. You were on the left because yeah. I was trying to pass it to Jordan, you. I no, I, I, I'd come around, I think. Right. Was it Jordan, I think Jordan Murphy played 15 that day. Jordan, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, I'll tell you. Yeah, he, 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 he would have ended up 15. Yeah. That was a hell of a tour. I don't a, know how we didn't win. Yeah. <laughs> Unlucky, I think, is Conrad Smith's first cap. How have we got no. into this? Terrible. Don't know. We yeah, digress. Yeah, I wanted yeah, to yeah. talk about Steve Walsh because yeah. I've never told that story. <laughs> what, what I want because we're, we're going to get into the game itself. Just quickly, reflection of 06 and the one to try. Yeah, it was. Oh, it that was. That is boy zone stuff. Yeah, it isn't is. It? It's it was incredible. I can't overstate how brilliant that was. And 06 and 07. This was you know, only Zealand. brilliant memories against England. Um, the last game there was rubbish, but. It has shaped my life, actually. I would say, and that's not that's a, not a, a no statement. Especially no. Yeah, though. So, um, you know, <laughs> I said it to if, if any. Um, it happened to me once. Was there someone was asking me for advice about you know you know a successful career in rugby. If you're Irish, score two tries against England, that, and you're boxed <laughs> off. That's all you have to do. <laughs> so it actually impacted my life. So allowed me, I think, a platform to sort of, you know, work in media after afterwards as well, which is, you know, I'm sort of very grateful to. So, but when I think about when I was growing up as a child and you're recreating moments, yeah. you're recreating moments, the score tries in the last minute against England for at, a triple crown. At full stretch. At full stretch, yeah. you know. And I had, the memories I had in, in, in my mind growing up were, you know, you would have had um, the famous try that... Um, uh, Ginger McLaughlin scored against yeah. uh, Ireland. We was carried on, and I remember Mick Galway '93, and I always remember the crowd coming in and being yeah. part of it as well. 
And then for that try in, in 2006, our Gara jumped on me, you know, and we were rolling around. And I was still panicking whether I was in. I didn't know. I said, like, because you're holding something back. Yeah. Because, you know, if that's taken away, you're just destroyed. Um, but it was, it was, it was, it was like a, a boyhood, the total boyhood dream. My brother tells a great story about it as well. Um, we only used to get two tickets for you know away games. Couldn't get them. Like so, so my mum and dad obviously had them, and uh, Mark had managed to scrounge another ticket, and uh, he was sitting, you know, right, right, just in front of where that try was scored, and he had he had um, become friends with you know an um, Irish couple who were English Irish, you know, so they were first generation. I'd say, and he was um, talking a bit them through the whole game, and. Um, you know, he was nervous the whole way, but chatting away, and then scored the try, and up, and they're all screaming and going crazy. And then he said, "That's my brother," and he's he's he's, he's not sure if they thought he was just a loon <laughs> that was playing with this yeah. try scorer. Yeah, yeah, yeah everyone's yeah, a yeah, brother. Yeah. But uh, what a, they were hugging because they were hugging the final whistle. They were hugging each other, and he left them with, "That's my brother," and and, and they went into you know never to never to speak again. Amazing. Um, but anyway, um, so there was that. And Cro- I mean, Croke Park and was, Croke Park. was for, for Croke many Park different reasons. Was um, sort of social hi- history yeah. in Ireland as well. That's what I felt. And think about it, we lost that. We should have won a Grand Slam that year. Oh my God, we oh, should have won How a Grand do you lose Slam. to France? Yeah, lo- lost to France. The last kick of the game, you know, it was, you know, it was, it was shocking. But it was a circumstance where there was, I don't know what the options for us were if we lost against England in that game. Yeah. I honestly don't know. And it's funny, when you remove the option to lose... You, you win, and I, if you look, I at was always careful of saying that because mm. on the day I watched, it, I was in with Jimmy Nesbitt that day. Oh, that's a good man to be with. Brilliant. Well, yeah. not if England, not if Ireland are battering England because <laughs> yeah. he's not shy of telling you how <laughs> shit we are. If he batters us every time England lose, he, he'll literally drop a note. And go, has there been some rugby today? <laughs> he's fun um, though. He's fun. But uh, I totally agree with that. But it was dangerous for an English person to say that because I wasn't sure. Of, of, mm. I just didn't feel sensing before that game mm. when the anthems and they were totally, they were beautifully respected. There had been talk of potential the anthems not being respected yeah i y- you as a team were not allowed to leave that stadium beaten yeah. uh yeah. and you could but you could sense that i was watching you could sense that before yeah it was it was definitely the case and i often think about sort of the social pressure that comes with countries rugby countries like new zealand and south africa they're the only ones actually that have that history of success forever they, and the expectation that they win every single game and i do think that serves you know it's something that's passed on to teams like you know obviously the team of you know this year has no connection to the team of you know 50 years ago but they do because society pushes them to to not accept defeat so that was the kind of only taste of that kind of thing we've ever had so when you've got nowhere to go sometimes you just have to win so but i was i was telling tom um, before i came in um i should have been sent off in that game there was a um and this is what some i i i reflect on this quite a bit because it would have been again totally changed my life if if it had gone the other way so um um stratum stratum david stratum david stratum scored didn't he that day? he scored yeah um um he was playing uh, opposite me and the ball was chipped in and I was so pumped up and I, I kind of forearm smashed him and he didn't go down, but it was the, the, the linesman was right there. And now with you know reviews and everything, you'd be 100% gone. And so I always feel, as, as now as a commentator, I do say, I can, I can see when people make idiotic decisions on the field i kind of have some sympathy because the you know the the attention that's involved you just sometimes you make bad decisions it's like what's it you know when they go to um the what's it called the death zone in everest yeah you know, when there's not enough oxygen and you, people start making really bad decisions that's that's what it felt like for me and i made this terrible decision and like almost my sort of life flashed before me in a second and the touch judge was there but I can't remember the touch judge's name, but I'm certain... It wasn't Steve Walsh. <laughs> no, it wasn't Steve Walsh. But he was retiring, right, at the end. That was the last game he was ever doing. And before the game, he'd come in and he asked Brian to sign a shirt. And Brian was like, no problem. Any lads, get over here. Shall <laughs> oh, I whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa. Honestly. English objection. Honestly. Wow. The I, touch yeah. judge is a fanboy. Yeah. I'm in a crush before yeah, the game. Before the game. I mean, and so, <laughs> so you had the situation with that. And then you had the fact that, are you going to send off an Irishman in that game? But then, you know, can imagine if I had been sent off, I would have been an absolute pariah. Yeah. An absolute pariah. And that would have 
changed my life. Instead, you scored a try. One by 50. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, and here we are now. Yeah, isn't yeah, it? Exactly. Yeah. Made a sliding, sliding doors, doors moment. Yeah, yeah. Here you go. Perhaps we could get the referee, assistant referee's TMO into the England changing room with a, a, signed, sh a, a signed shirt and a Sharpie on Saturday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that does lead us on to this weekend. And interestingly, because, and forgive me for saying, growing up watching England Ireland fixtures, it always felt like Ireland were there to spoil England's party, is mm. what the fixture was for many, many years. It's obviously flipped around significantly now. And it sort of feels this weekend like it's England's job to spoil Ireland's party. You've watched my dad all, got, we've I been think my dad finally got, I think that was the game that got him sacked eventually as England coach. Right. Um, he had a fullback. Uh, so what year would it have been? It must be 85, right? Odd year we're at your place. Yeah. Yeah, 85. Triple, yeah, cr yeah. triple crown year for Triple crown year. It was, was my old man's last game. Yeah. Um, had a fullback who, not sure the main name is, I can't actually remember. No, my old man always says, someone says, oh yeah, that fullback dropped a couple that cost you your job. He said, well, technically, I think you have to touch the ball to, to, <laughs> to drop it. Uh, Jonathan Davies scored a high up and under at Arms Park, and then my old man, and then he got charged. Chris Martin, then he got charged down at your place. And it's one of those old ones. I'm sort of 12 years old, 13, and just think it's all great. And I'm just watching my dad come home at the weekend, sinking into a hole, realizing the tap on the shoulder right. is going to come at, at, at any moment. So um, I remember there was always a moment uh, in. 03 when we won where I got accused of being a fraction you put the arrogant. You got the ball down in the corner. Why was that? But uh, A couple of things, but one almost, and I pointed to the, straight to the crowd and I was like, oh, look at him, show putting. I was like, Dad, that's for 85. Uh, and a bit naff, but my old man had lost his job at that place yeah. and had been sort of booed out of town and that was it and I sort of went back then. We'd been beaten in 01. I was like, oh God, I've got, I've got, I've got to win here some stage to try and sort of balance the books. So a fraction. I was really lucky that I kept on missing the games that Ireland got hockeyed in by England at that really? period. Yeah, was that yeah. hamstring and sort so, of the <laughs> no. old Will Carling so M25 my, syndrome? My, not, not away from home. My first cap was in 2000. You had, and there was a, it was the catalyst from my first cap and five other changes the next week. First game was in Twickenham, put 40 points yeah. on Ireland, and Ireland were lucky to get really, <laughs> you know. Zero, whatever it was. And um, um, so I missed that, then came in, and we had, you know, we had success. And then the triple, the Grand Slam game. Yeah. Oh, it was, it was, oh, was, two that, was yeah. a kicking as well. Yeah, I, I missed that one. Right. And then I missed the... Um, Did I miss those three? Yeah, because Kevin Mags was... I missed those. Kevin Mags and Brown yeah, were yeah, centre. Yeah, yeah. And, so and was, um, that nutter from London Irish, Bishop. Justin Bishop. Yeah, Justin Bishop, yeah. yeah, yeah Tyrone played. played in that as well, I think, didn't he? Yeah, he may have. Yeah, he may have played in that. Lo lovely dance down memory lane. Yeah. Um, where, this is quite self indulgent. No, by it's the quite way. I mean, and, and, you know, people yeah. will love this because it, it is a fixture with extraordinary, not just sort of significance, but history. And there's a lot that goes on between these two. And I think this Saturday will be another. But you're right, the context for this game has changed a little bit because that was always the context. It was. Irish massive underdogs, yeah, and can, can we spoil the party? And yeah. a lot of it, those games where you guys were going for grand slams, yeah. you know, and we weren't, yeah. So that and that was the case, and they were you were always favourites, and that tags that well. I actually think the sort of Borthwick does himself and England a disservice by talking about, like for example, last weekend, oh, we're we're the underdogs. What England team shouldn't be an underdog to the Six Nations to anyone? Yeah. They shouldn't. And now Ireland. Thank you for saying that, because by the way, if I get if I say that, I get shot. But, but it's I, true. I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. yeah. But but and and you know, if you look at the development of the Irish team, we were always underdogs, and you felt we were felt comfortable in underdogs. But do you know what? It's really self indulgent to you know give yourself the, the tag of underdogs because ultimately it means you're losing more games than you're winning, or you're not expecting to win the big games. You're not expected to win those big games. I don't think that's a good you know, um, position to, to have for a team or, or a sort of mindset. So what Ireland are now is undoubtedly something that doesn't sit well with Irish teams or Irish sort of society is you've got a team that are now consistently, you know, um, the favourites. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, it, it would be sort of churlish. Ireland are going for the second round slam. You can't pretend that you're not favourites. So you just have to deal with being favourites. Yeah. The crown sits easy on their head. Now, it doesn't mean they'll necessarily win the back-to-back -back grand slams, but you watch Ireland turn up at stadiums and the way they play, there is no talk of fear, of nerves. Um, they look to a man so comfortable in everything they're doing. So comfortable. Yeah. But I think that took a very long time to get to that position. Yes. 
And it's only just there now. I loved your line that you gave us the other day, which is it's not just the actor that knows his own lines or their own lines. It's the actor who knows everybody's lines. And, and Ireland just seemed to be this machine at the moment in which every cog is, is working in perfect harmony. Can I just ask super quickly what the mood was post-World Cup and how long before they just moved on and went, well, crack this on, is, we've this got is, a great team. This is the thing. I, I expected a bit more of a hangover. Um, if you look at what's gone on with France, we could do another two shows, but what's gone off and fallen off an absolute cliff. I think it's clear that um, the expectation of that French team was 100% that we're going to win the World Cup and this was our only opportunity to do it. It was our whole World Cup and it's gone and it's, you know, and will never be repeated and they're still in some way, whether coaches or players or a bit of both, they're wallowing in that and haven't been able to break loose and it's affected performance. And I, you know, to a lesser degree, I, I kind of know, I've seen that happen before because it happened with us in 2007 and going into 2008. 2007, we, our expectation was we were going to do very well in that World Cup. We had a disaster and it, we, we had missed an opportunity. We knew that there wasn't another four years actually. And, and for the vast majority of people on that, it ended up not being another four years. That was it. And that, brought that brought you know that was brought into the next six stations and we had a terrible six stations lost three mm. so um that's where france are with ireland um i don't think that it was a it was as acutely bad because i know it was out in the quarter final but it was against new zealand right yeah so just historic we talk we talk about ireland being favorites or being you know or being under you know somewhere in the psyche it's acceptable to lose to new zealand in a world cup Right, for almost anyone apart from South Africa, yeah. right? You can yeah. you can sort of get away with that. So I don't think they had that. They they saw oh this was totally ripped out of our grasp. Interestingly, I think maybe in two years time they might go, especially if the success continues, they might go. Actually, that was our chance. Yeah. But right now they haven't held that. And Sexton did a sort of a, a favor to everyone. His last departing gift was, you know, he did, he has this quote: "We lost, but we won." Yeah. Right, because of the experience they all had and, and their sort of connection with fans and everything. And I think that got the players through to where they are now. Now, I don't believe that, actually. I think they lost and they lost. They lost yeah. a big opportunity and things like the line-out went wrong, which they must regret forever. So maybe the difference between them winning that World Cup because it was a big opportunity. But they haven't carried the emotional baggage on, uh, which is, uh, uh, which, uh, and it wasn't, there didn't seem to be a huge amount of emotional baggage from it. They, they got rid of it pretty quickly. I wonder also, you, you talk about loss, but one, that engagement with the fans and Zombie, it sort of lifted the team into a new realm of connection between themselves and their supporter base, which is something that England at the moment are really searching for, underlined a few times over. Without sort of the right question, cut me your cake on England right now. What are you seeing? What is frustrating? What progress is is there for you? And we're going for a deep reach into no, I the I had a couple of ideas that I've scribbled down now and I'm sort of coming on here. Um, and I didn't want to, I don't want to come on here and put, pour a load of petrol on yeah. and go get rid of him, get rid of that. The, what they're doing is a complete shambles. I'm trying to be 2024, let's see the positives. Let's look at the issue, what's going on. Um, the top of my list is I don't think uh, uh, this isn't any. I don't think the balance of the side is right, particularly in the pack. I've always felt in the pack. I mean, <laughs> the fact that Ireland, the entire pack, can all catch, carry, pass, handle is great. Yeah. I think every pack really has to have a space hunters and space fillers. You have to have four lads who can bend over and push and leap and just do set piece metronomically well and just, uh, huge authority in the set piece. And then you have to have four lads who can play a bit. Because otherwise, in the modern game, you can't get yourself out of a hole. Yep. If you get stuck behind, you can't chase a game, you can't play. Um, I think England have become so focused on fixing, trying to fix defence and trying to fix set piece that they've got a pack that is just slightly skewed in terms of lads who are tremendously impressively strong at their, at their skill set, which is scrum and line-out. But then... What's the point of being amazing at that if once you've got the ball, you can't actually do a huge amount with it? Yeah. So you could actually have an argument for every single one of those players in the England pack playing, but with a different combination. I hope I'm making sense. Yeah, yeah absolutely perfect. On sense, that. Yeah. So um, we're winning loads of ball. We're hitting our metrics. We're hitting our data. But the point is, once you get it's the old thing. Once you like Mike Tyson, once you get a slap in the face, 
you, you lose the ability to, to, to stay in control. And I think that's where England are. They start well. They've got history of starting well and getting seven points, ten points. But the second you stop them on the game line, I think their ability to play their way out is tough. Then, then you move on to a question, and it shot me up when I'm bored here, data versus feel. Yep. And you look at understanding, well, the, the data says you don't run it from here because, again, but that limits your ability to be threatening, look threatening, even if you are going to kick it. I would expect everyone to play with pace and with tempo. From restarts, we go straight into box. I watch Ireland play from a restart. They never kick straight off. Bang, they go midfield. Occasionally, they get a half nibble, playing out the back. Or they get hit middle, get stopped. They split their kickers low left. Crowley, Crow, Crow, uh, Crowley, Crowley and Frawley, I get confused. But yeah. Crowley right, split kick off, go. Forces wingers to come up. England always go lock, bang, in the corner. One rock, kick. I mean, I'm not asking you to run it. To expect to score a try, but to Just ask a play question a little to the, bit yeah. and look as though you're going to play. The bit that the, the the tall nature of our scrum halves walking towards a rock tells the entire opposition that even if it was on, they wouldn't run it. Attack the ball. I mean, you might still box kick it, but get there quick and look like you're getting quick. And I did have one more, which was. Um, just interesting, just choice of mindset. So, um, can't remember the minute, right-hand side, uh, Italy, halfway line scrum. Right, so if I gave you an international scrum on the right-hand side now, at 42 years old, oh, well, you, 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 get, you get Drick out, you go right-hand side. I know, and the Italians defend with their scrum half in the boot, so they don't even use him as the first one. They sit in the back and he goes, if I set you halfway line, right-hand side scrum, as a centre who scored umpteen tries, what's it? What's going through your head? Um, you would want to get all the backs against a limited number of backs for Italy. And Simple you get style. excited, right? Mm. You get excited. Go here we go. Here we go. Pass to Henry Slade. Oh yeah, sorry. You, there's no expectation you would do anything other than move the ball wide. Oh yeah, that's a given. Yeah, no, you're going to play. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, right. You're going to like here we go. This is it. I've yeah, been waiting yeah, all yeah. year. I've been picked for England. I've got a right hand side scrum or a left hand side scrum. We go. Yeah, here we go. Mm. They drop it to Henry Slade. He kicks it. He just go. No, 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 what's that? And it sort of showed it again. I, I'm going into my new shy a little bit. It just says the mindset of what then people are playing against. Them with. And as a play, off the top line out, first line out against Scotland, uh, Ben Earl, he, he only just gets across again, but he's still rel relatively quick ball. Bang, straight back to forward, in the pocket, cross kick. Now, we won the ball back, but it was a tap ball. It was a 50-50 ball. And it's just, it's just how your mind is. So my view would be with talk about space hunters, space fellows. I think there are a variety of lads in that England team who probably want to play a little bit more. Yeah. But they, but it's not part of the game plan. And there are those who don't want to play a little bit more who just want to stick to the game plan. So the problem is you're then stuck in a hole. Because even if it then shows itself and the opportunity's there, half the lads are going to go, no, no, we don't do this. So I'm then hesitant to set off because I'm going... If I go, is anyone going to follow me? And then you hold, then you, then you really are stuck in a little bit of a hole. So my point would be, if you pick players and you've got Dingwall in there and players like that, give him first receiver role. Get him go at the line off that wide right scrum. Get Slade on his outside. Drop forward around the back. Don't know who was on the wing at the on the right hand side at that time. Freeman would have been floating in and around. Yeah, it just it just feels as though they are stuck on as. Um, with an attitude that makes it really difficult for them when they need to turn it on to be able to turn it, it on. It feels like they don't have a philosophy of their own. They haven't established what the philosophy is. Now, maybe we're seeing the you know, the, the start of a new philosophy. We saw a slightly more progressive play against Scotland. We don't know if they'll continue that. You know, I think it's if they don't continue, I think it can be damaging. If they go, actually, let's just retreat a little bit for this game so we get over this game. That's what the problem is. That together with, instead of having a, uh, an overall philosophy that is England's, they've got players, and it's how can what can this player do for England? What type of player is he? And then we'll build out this week what's best around that. So we've got some big bull carrying Sanders. Got to use them. We've got a big number eight. Let's get them off the back. But it's 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 and that changes week to week depending on whose selection is. That's what it feels like. Instead of 
this is our identity, this is what we're trying to do, and now you can build your identity based on the type of players that you have, right? That's You don't just go, well, here's an identity, and then try and put a um, round um, a peg in a square hole. You go, these are the type of players I have, right? This is the right philosophy for this type of players, and that may be more or less progressive. And then you go after that, and that is it. And you, you have a coach who inspires you to deliver that and you, you, uh, you have the team buy in from it. And that's why I was kind of, you know, one of the issues was, you know, you've got players talking about, ah, we think we should be playing this new different type of way and we've had a word with the coach. It's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, no. It's like the coach should be saying it's the way we are playing and you should be buying into that. Not, uh, and if you don't have that as a starting point, I think you're in big trouble. But uh, So the best teams you were part of were coach sort of set the philosophy and then the players determined it because the, the times of the Co way you said Co the phrase was coach driven player led yeah right so so you're not okay. i'm not excluding i'm not saying we don't hear from the the players like listen what happens is you have the best coaches do this right they have a general sort of idea of the type of rugby that they want to play right they then go and see what players they have um, and, and if and they will do a version of whatever you know philosophy they can based on the, the type of players with those players they will talk about their players what you would do is you find about I think you maybe need five or six lieutenants or advocates right for what you want to do and the best coaches I ever I play, you know, ever coached me did that they were smart enough to go in you him these guys are the key people that are going to deliver this you he doesn't then have to sell in what they're doing because those players will sell it in for you. If you have advocates on in the key areas, the key lines across the field, that's what you do. Can I ask again, I mean, I listened to a Radio 5 Live interview before, what was our second game? Wales. Wales at and Martin Johnson was on. And uh, I think Mark Chapman was doing it. And he said, um, England have talked this week about expressing themselves, Martin. <laughs> you can already feel oh the God, wind's it, coming. It was, I rang him up straight away. I was crying with laughter. I was going, you just wanted to spew. It just, he goes, I mean, he doesn't understand. what. So my view would be, uh, that would be as an older guard. When, when you hear, if you heard an opponent says, oh, we really want to express ourselves I this week. It, honestly, what, do you know what it is? I think it is charlatan <laughs> behaviour, right? It's, it's, it's horseshit, right? Because... If you look at Ireland now, Ireland looked like a very sort of progressive, evolved team where, where they're throwing the ball around, right? And that's only in the last little while. That comes from a real strict, rigid philosophy and game plan that's established that gives the options that people that, that people take. But there is it, it, it is counterintuitive. The more sort of structured you are, the more unstructured you play you can have and the more decision making you can have. But this idea of expressing yourself, you have to have a system in place. Right. Expressing yourself is making decisions, right? Making the right decisions. That's what expressing yourself is. It's not like, you know, I'm I'm I, you know, I get the ball here on a whim, I decide to do something crazy, crazy and like because you know I want to express myself as a rugby player. That's a nonsense. You actually, win again, like. you have a Go you have a ball. you have a system you have a system in place. You are you are. That's not to say you don't take the right option. You the right option could be a hitch kick around the, around the corner, take this guy on the outside, or it could be a you know it could be a flick in behind the back. It could be any of those things. But it's it's based on um, a, a framework that allows you to make decisions based on what's in front of you. And you can't. Uh, the, the issue I have is you can't try and have a connection with the fans by saying we're going to express ourselves. And then against Scotland, be nine points down with eight minutes to go and go to box kick routine. It's just a totally contradictory. And then the fans start to go, well, I don't get, what are you telling me? And if you're trying to make that, I know it's not about the fans winning the game. But that, I think you mentioned there's that sort of disconnect at the start between players and fans at the moment. And you're in danger of over-promising and under-delivering. Are you using the term, you know, expressing yourselves? Is it being used incorrectly interchangeable with ambition because ambition is something else and every team needs ambition and the best teams have the most ambition and and you know you, you spoke about that's how how ireland exit their defensive zones now with the options always through especially if the if it's it's ireland on the on the right you know you've if they've always they almost always have a look to see if they want to move it sorry left to right all the way left to right it's always an option there and so that ambition way, is important. That's expressing yourself, if you want to use that, not like an individual on a whim 
doing something silly. And if you go to the detail there, if England then go, right, we know they're going to exit with low, let's put four on that side. Well, they'll just run it up the right and score eight metres up the right-hand side. That's by by having that mindset of, 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 yes, we've got our parameters, we understand where we'd like to exit from, we exit on the front foot, we try and force people forward, then kick in behind by having all these options of look and then having the actual ability that if it is on in your own 22 you go for it that's what manipulates d's and and that england just don't seem to be doing at the moment by not exploring and if you don't trust the ability to look after the own ball look after your own ball for two or three phases in your own 22 before you kick then you're just inviting pressure by their own admission english rugby is in inverted commas in transition at the moment that's what that's what the narrative is coming out of the camp they are trying things they've implemented a new defense they've got new coaches new players etc what you're saying makes it sound very muddled and i think a lot of supporters would probably say that what they're watching appears very muddled can you see what they are trying to do as a path of progress from this? Or are you worried that the narrative and what you're seeing in selection, you're seeing in game plan, means that you're just going to keep going around the roundabout for quite yeah, some if time? If I start with the initial point, let's start with a, uh, some optimism. and says, So can I see? Yes, I can see. Let's put really, let's put the framework in place first. Let's. I know there's been a, a small, I don't think it's been a spat. I think Ben Young said something about they've not, they're not doing enough reps in attack. attack yeah. And the players Actually, have come Johnny out. So the same thing we're, do, we're not we're doing enough so i sort of get the the easier things to fix which you alluded to which you've got to pick those players in that world cup and the reality is they found themselves in the semi-final they found themselves 15 6 up with 10 minutes to go it's diff it's really difficult to argue with that and england yeah. fans are like we had them we had them um so you go set piece and you go things that you can fix quickly uh, and defense and so from that perspective i can absolutely see that the problem that it comes with is the expectation as others found uh, a island is so blooming good we've got france away we can't win a calcutta cup to save our life that those slow baby steps for an for a union like england which however much they might argue about lack of money and time together is it, it's that's a tough debate to win to say, oh no, we haven't got enough time together. We haven't got enough players. Y you know, they're, they're still in a five-star luxury hotel at the Penny Hill Park. They still travel. And it's that's not about English everything. rugby. We did see, you know, a, a, a different type of player, some a, a, a development of the um, attacking philosophy against Scotland. So, uh, what happens now against Ireland? As I said at the start, do you pull back? Or do you keep on going and hope you can get, you know, it, it so, works? So, so answer the so question. Are well, you, what, what do you think English should I, do I, this Well, you can't be as half pregnant. Right. <laughs> That's the big problem. You can't be half pregnant. So um, um, I don't know how far they've gone on the path. You, there's two two conversations here. One is in defence. They should have made, they've had two weeks now, either side of, of the Scotland game. They should have made really significant progress in defence in that time. That should be, they should be. Uh, if you go with the same personnel. Well, true, true, true. You know, or, but either way, there to some degree, there should be, um, you know, there should be significant improvements. There will be a philosophy of the team. will be more aware. There'll be rep numbers. It and it's the easier side of the ball to make progress on. The more difficult one is the attacking side of things. And the problem with the attacking side of things, it's actually also your defensive side because if you start dropping ball, putting ball down. Then you start, you know, you start absolutely like you know, um, uh, leaking points as well. So. Um, it'll. I think it'll. De it'll depend on how confident he is in what the process that he has started. You mentioned very briefly. There's a real snippet as to the All Blacks game where it went line out. But the only way you can beat, only way you can beat Ireland is deny them the line out. Right. They win line out with their bounce out plays and so much of it. And, and again, I'm. I watch all Ireland's games, but I don't watch as many of your Leinster games as, as of course you do. But I see. If they control the line out and they troll, control the touchline, they're a little bit like watching Manchester City against Manchester United yesterday. United go up with a with an absolute screamer, Rashford, and then it's 85% possession. They control the ball, they control the tempo of the game. Gibson Park is an extraordinary, fabulous rugby player to understand when to run, when to kick, but he attacks every ruck as though everything's high tempo and then even might might slow it down. And if they control the tempo and the drumbeat of the game, then England are done. So, yeah, that, that's, I mean, I think that's at the very core, how do you beat Ireland? I mean, there's a, you've got to kick your goals, you've got to then score the try, but you've you've got to, whoever's in charge of line which I think is Steve himself, yeah. is it? Um, 
has to find a way to limit them to 65, 70% success rate. And if they do that, they've got half. That's I mean, half not impossible. Wow. That's not impossible. That's not impossible because this Irish line out isn't where it's it's the one area of slight vulnerability that and the problem is with line out if people think you have a vulnerable line out you have a vulnerable line out right because the way people attack it is different like you uh, people think you have a flawless line out they're sitting on the ground they're actually not even throwing numbers up because they're more worried about you getting rolled over the mall they're worried about how fast they can get off the back of the line out to stop you you damaging the midfield so they're not contesting but you know, so do you think England will go hard? Oh, I think they'll go massively hard on it. They were going to see numbers up all over the place, and that could have a bearing on on, on selection potentially as well. But they, you will see that Ireland, end of the Six Nations last year, wasn't wasn't perfect. Um, Pre World Cup games, it was raised. Oh, we have an issue here. In the World Cup, it cost us. Yeah, it was the thing that cost us, and you know that was sort of the frustration that we come out the other end of the World Cup when it really matters. And we didn't deliver. We come out against um, uh, Italy and have a perf- France perfect line out, Italy perfect line out. But, but, you know, even Paul O'Connell said against France, they were a number down. They're missing their best line out uh, jumper in, in uh, Wilmington. Um, we're against then Italy. Italy weren't as you know contesting as they might be. Against Wales, it was going all right. Wheels started to come off a little bit in the second half. England are going to be all over it. Yeah, all the, over it. The, you know, uh, Itoje, Chess and Martin, well, all three of them will play and start. They'll pick six, six foot five lads, they'll pick them at two, four and, at the tail and they'll just get as many of them up in the air as, as and they'll risk the fact that they, they absolutely, Ireland control the touchline, Ireland batters. So that means, it's more than just that, that means also it changes how England might kick because they may kick the ball out. Yeah. Or, or kick the ball to Ireland, let Ireland kick it out more often than than um, they normally would. So is that? So the question is here: Is this an ultra um, <laughs> specific game plan to beat Ireland, or is it continuing on the path of development for a bigger prize somewhere else? I'm, <laughs> you know, I, I think it'll be very specific to Ireland. Totally. I mean, because it's what a scalp. Yeah, you beat the best team in the world. I mean, you talk about what you were saying that before, Shay, about year. your career made to to beat this Ireland team. Now, I remember, yeah. remember they went to New Zealand. Igno- uh, you can't ignore what happened in the World Cup, but I think they're eleven out of eleven on the spin in the in the Six Nations. Yeah. Um, yeah, in the Six Nations, uh, what they did in New Zealand. I mean, list on one finger the amount of teams that have won a Test series in New Zealand. Yeah, uh, uh, it was. And having lost the first, you did lose the first, yeah. right, didn't you? I mean, having lost the first, One, which two, they should have won, and you think, oh, that's going to kill them, and they come back. So, um, England fans, England beat Ireland on the weekend. We've had a great season, and it's it's got to that stage because that narrative so, changed so from good. fifteen years but they ago. Have, they have to find a win quick because uh, Shane alluded maybe before the Scotland game. The next ten tests were three against New Zealand, yeah. one against South Africa, one away in France, one away in Scotland, two Japan games. Well, I have those. Australia at home. Well, you know, I mean, I know Joe Schmidt's turning up, uh, and um, who, did, who beat the Crusaders on the weekend, the Waratahs. So they've got yeah. they've got a few players coming through. You're thinking we've got three gimmies there. Um, uh, gimmies, that's <laughs> this is balls, isn't it? <laughs> wow, <laughs> um, that's coming out in November. Can I can I ask you? It's very very interesting about about the tactics that are going to be played. W- one of the things that seems to be a really hot talking point around England at the moment is this. I was going to say consistency. It's actually inconsistency in selection, particularly in the centre combination. I'm fascinated in your view on that. Very quickly before that, pop quiz questions. The most successful England centre partnership, oh, I'm just looking down there, of all time is? Gus Cutton Carling. I mean, I don't, you, do you, I don't know what he said. You can say I say it. me. You can say <laughs> like yeah. what? No, sir. Greenwood and Tyndall. Was it? 19 matches together, 17 wins, 89%, the best in Britain and Ireland. Tyndall was good, man. <laughs> it had to be, didn't it? Yeah. You, had to, you had to say that sitting in seat. Most successful Ireland centre combination of all time? Um, you and Dricko? No. Darcy and Dricko? I only played a couple of times in the centre. Um, I tell you, um, Mags and Dricko would have been good for a Aki while. Aki it, it, it was. Oh. Aki Ringrose? But how many, how many games? Well, uh, more than five. Aki okay. Ringrose. It might be. Because Drico had so many games. Who did Mike Gibson play with? They didn't win them all <laughs> yeah. in those days, did they? That's he was the best. That's going way back. Um, no, the answer is O'Driscoll and Hogan. Was it? Seven matches, six wins, 86%. Oh. 
Do you know how to Jim Jim Edra scored 56 starts and 64% win ratio. Thank you for bringing up that stat. That's are. really made There's my day. There's a little feather in your well, media cap. You will put that on should have spent more time in the centre. Yeah. <laughs> well, <why laughs> I was wasted out in that bloody wing, wasn't I? <laughs> yeah. So what that leads on to is obviously the consistency for you and Tins, and actually Mike Cat as well, who can, yeah. the three of you were an it amazing was the best combination. Of <laughs> exactly. better than both of us. <laughs> but when you dig into England in recent years, so this is the last World Cup cycle, yeah. Ireland, 41 games, 10 centre combinations, 83% win ratio. Yeah. Okay, so 10 combinations in 41 games. Scotland, 44 games, 12 combinations, 59% win ratio. Wales, 45 games, 21 combinations, 36% win ratio. And England, 45 and 19. So they've tried 19 different centre combinations in 45 games, which is essentially one in two. They are changing their game at 53% win ratio. The, what is the question? The question is, how can you build a team? With great difficulty. Right, yeah. full stop. Is I mean, that part of the problem then? Is that you, you could actually you said England haven't got enough players. They've almost got too many players and they've got ten different clubs, all of whom are championing their own players. They've got options every time something goes wrong to change things. Does there need to be an attempt I think to try and build something for the long term? Or is, is it, can English rugby just not afford to do that because of the external noise and pressure? Uh, so it then comes back to a little bit. So let's take, who should we take? Fraser Dingwall, particular enjoy watching Fraser Dingwall play. He's only played two times and got dropped because, of course, they brought the power back of Ollie Lawrence. The thing is, I think a lot of those centres have had it. A lot of them are decent centres. Yeah. But they've all tried to play him in a Manu or an Ollie Lawrence way. So they've all ended up just being a slightly worse version of the people they really wanted to pick because of the style they really wanted to play. Yeah. As opposed to, I'm going to pick you for what you can do rather than force a round peg in a square hole. Because if uh, Fraser Dingwall never plays for England again, He'll go. I never really got to play like you know, like I play. Yeah. Um, so it goes back to the philosophy of what do you want from a centre? And by the way, if you haven't got that availability, then my perspective, you got to find a different way to play with the lads that you've got. I don't know if I'm answering your question. Do you know the other thing that's really, really important, and I think this is re understated and uh, people don't speak about it is. If you have, uh, uh, the centre for me is incredibly crucial to the overall style yeah. the team is going to play. Because if you do not have a big presence at centre, the ball doesn't get out there, right? They actually, it, it will be dominated by the, the pack, the 10, you know, maybe even first centre, right? You need somebody out there that is saying, this ball should be coming out here or we should have options to move the ball wide. I want to play in this game. I'm not standing here as a passenger cleaning out rooks and carrying ball. I'm actually going to play rugby to the point that you said about getting excited about the play. And if you do not have someone who's established and has played and can be very demanding, then that doesn't happen. And that was the thing. I was absolutely blessed with having Brian O'Driscoll in centre for Ireland and for Leinster because we knew Brian was by far our best player. And so forth, we had to develop a game plan, whatever the other players we had. Get the ball to him and things, good things are going to happen. And, um, or, or even use him as a decoy, but it's going out in his sort of direction. And I would say the uh, same for you. You know, you you're blush, but you were, you know, a very um, sort of you know, confident, established player who, you know, would move the ball as well. And you're not going to stand out there and wait for, you know, a forward pack, as dominant as your forward pack were, to go, listen, you can have the ball the whole time. You're like, actually, we're getting in on this as well. England don't have anyone of that stature almost anywhere <laughs> across the back line. Right. So, so this is the sort of question I'm tr trying to find ways for England to get themselves a sort of the, the questions you've thrown around identity and philosophy and, you know, how do they build something or fast track something in the current situation they're in? Or is this just going to take... I mean, the danger is it's just going to be more tinkering and more tinkering and more tinkering and results are going to pile up against them. We're going to have more questions and greater pressure. It's right, less confidence week, within uh, the is squad. Marcus back fit and available? Yes. Um, and Alex Mitchell. And Alex but Mitchell. But then you're, you're, you're back into the spinning the wheel again. Well, are they spinning the wheel or are they picking the team you wanted to pick? And you might say, well... But tough. But they were but injured. Look, but look at what Ollie Lawrence. Look at the challenge Ollie Lawrence had in having not played rugby for six weeks and getting stuck straight into a Calcutta Cup game. Marcus Smith hasn't played in six weeks. You're now asking him to go up against the best team in the world. Yeah. For a team that is low on confidence, a crowd that is ready to throw its tomatoes. Yeah. And say, get out there and win us a game. I mean, it's is that is that a reasonable decision? 
to make. I'm trying to work out where else. Well, where I don't else know. you go? I know. I mean, the Ollie Lawrence selection. It, it's a tough ask, right? For that style of player to come back in and like dominate, having having not played. Um, the reality is, where England might say they've been a little unlucky, is if Man had been fit, he'd have 130 caps and he played all of them. You might say, well, that's the way he plays. I'm not trying to find, having said the most amount of players, we've got stuck on a style that we go, he is at his best so successful at what he does that we keep keep trying to clone him or find a version of his style to play. And we found one with Ollie, who also has been reasonably susceptible um, to, to injuries. Um, by the way, you just aren't really that, hard to find just answers on that. right now, isn't By the way, it? just on that, like the best England, you know, have have played in the last ten years wasn't with with that type of centre. Although I think he, he may have played outside centre, is with um, two first receivers in in Ford and Farrell when they were at their best at the World Cup in 2019. That was the best. That semi final. I know harp on about it the whole time. Some of the best rugby I've ever seen any team play. And that was with two first receivers attacking the line in the sort of Mac Gitto type mode mm. for for Australia. They did it so well four years before actually, and got them to a World Cup semi final with a kind of a, an average enough side as well. And you add on the, the, the tip on there in that game, specifically on the game that first, Carl Sinker little tip on Courtney Laws in off the top, but back to the forwards of the balance of playing, and and having that ambition, not expression, having that ambition um, to play. I, look, I'll I'll. I'll, I'll I'm super strong and you've always got to have two first receivers. But right. I've almost given up shouting because they just don't pick them. Uh, or, or, or will always go back to and default, go back to that balance of space hunters, space fillers. Uh, in your back line, you need three lads who are really comfortable playing fly half. Right. You really do. Um, who can just drop into that first. And George tried, Furbank tried it a little at, uh, at Scotland, which was great to see. Um, but you know, that your point, I agree with you. And it's interesting, we were speaking just before we came on here. If you look at someone like Bundiaki, who came into Ireland, he oh, he's your power. He is your Ollie Lawrence. You know, he is your power man. Get you over the gain line, recycle. Ah, passing isn't great, but like, just matter. He has, and maybe this is a this is a product of Ireland have not having as many players, and maybe he be, would have been turfed out under the, the other circumstances because his passing, especially left to right, was very average. He has upskilled unbelievably because I think he's gone right. This philosophy, uh, the way Ireland are playing, is bigger than me, and I'm going to be left behind here mm. unless I work on this area of the game. And of course, you know, he still has that power game, which is, you know, it's, it, he looks more powerful than ever, actually. But he has the ability to drop the ball off and, and pass the ball while moving forward, which makes him, as he is at the moment, feels like a time's unplayable. Yeah. And this, you talk about stability selection. I mean, one of the, the best upskilled centres in the past 15, 20 years is Marnonu. Who came on to the scene as a 21 year old guy? I'm going to rip your head off and I'll run over you. By the end of it, in the World Cup in 2015, he's throwing missed passes, he's offloading out the back door for that wonder try. He scores one, he's got balance, he's got an outside break as well, which buys into your point of why is there not been more stability in selection. I think England would have had more stability in selection in the midfield, but for um, Manu being so injured so often. Right, and therefore chasing and chasing and chasing, and when people don't deliver on it, let's try and find the next version. Mm. And also waiting for him because you know yeah. you couldn't really draw a line under him, could you? No. You but couldn't. this is this is the really interesting stat in the Tulangi era. So he made his debut two thousand and eleven, didn't he? So what have we had thirteen years of it? England have used forty seven different com centre combinations around Manu. He started with twelve different centres from Mike Tyndall, would you believe, through to Joe Marchant. I mean that is. I mean uh, that. Yeah. I don't know what the answer is, but perhaps we've, there's something in the challenge. And I, I'm assuming, by the way, that the rest of the England team haven't had that much change. So you know when mm. I say because that, that could be a data point that's actually relevant because the back three might have changed as many times. Yes. Has, Eng has England has England just continually chased it for the past ten years like across the team? But funny enough, it leads, and I'm not sure this is necessarily the show to do it, but what you have got in Ireland is four provinces, which enables combinations to spend a lot more time together. In Scotland, you've only got two. Whether trying to pick an international team now where time is of the premium and combinations are, as we've begun to see here, Ireland's 10 centre combinations with an 83% win ratio, do you need to find a way for English players to spend more time playing together? So you pull the teams out of Europe and you put in four super regions or something like that. 
where you've suddenly got six more games for English. Well, I don't think that's realistic. I don't think it's going to happen. Well, right. what, where, idea, where, right? where it can happen, where we is actually... That was like on the back of the bus in 05 when I came up with the political <laughs> yeah. idea. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just shut up, that's not going to happen. Shut up and make the tea. No, right. it's, okay. Thanks, it's, it's, oh, yeah. Thanks for coming Idiot. on. Idiot. Yeah. Idiot. Yeah. Yeah. And I hope you enjoy your yeah. last yeah. <laughs> uh, gig here. Um, no, Said Nietzsche with yeah. his rouge collar <laughs> and his smoking pipe. So um, the, the issue is that that consistency or that sort of familiarity can be bred through consistency of selection and that's where it has to be uh, that's what you looked at Ireland are you right where we are lucky in that we have you know our, our system was set up with four provinces provinces that was sort of a naturally that was an organically there yeah uh, it's about right for the amount of Ireland uh, uh, talent Ireland has and it also does two things it means that players play together a lot and you look at you, you know that almost the whole Leinster team or or you, know, you could take them out and they could play the whole Irish, you know, it could be the whole Irish side. Um, but also then, even when they get into Ireland, um, they're, you know, consistently playing and they're, they're familiar. And, uh, you know, you'll know that the sort of stats on this, uh, and it's often, often quoted, is that Australia team that won the World Cup in 91 and, and 99, especially the 91 team, I think, you know, there was maybe three teams involved in that, or, or there were both yeah. suppliers to it. Yeah. And that sort of cohesion is what's really important. So you are not going to have success if you turn out over players uh, consistently. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. There's, the, the, the the, there's very small silver lining to people losing their jobs and career and clubs going under. Is I, I totally agree. If we ended up with eight, I think Maybe we're, six. Th <laughs> we're starting to get to a space where each one of those can be strong. You can play in units and combinations, and it's easier to yeah. make these changes knowing that you're playing together a lot more often. But it's not going to be a popular thing to say, chop it to eight. No. We'll agree with We'll just ask them that and clip it up. <laughs> we'll agree with us, chop it to eight. Let's bring back the divisional championship or something like that. Okay. Trim it. Trim is a better it. word Trim. than yes. chop, isn't Select it? Select it. Yeah. To, yeah. <laughs> um, Curate. Curate it to eight. Curate the eight. There you go. Can we just just bang the drum on how it might? I mean, you spoke about Croke Park. Defeat is not an option. How do England find something on Saturday which is fire, brimstone, fury and a win? Yeah, again, I mean, I think it, it, if you edited three games, you'd find a decent 80 minutes in it. And so it's therefore it's there. And how consistently can they put those passages of play together i think what it's going to be really key is the scotland game 10 nil up real control and just uh, the first phase seven pointer the wide ball to a who gets to the outside of george ollie's like as george got to him steps in slade is gone on the blitz on the out no this is my man and it, the new systems that working as the new system works which is the interesting about half pregnant is uh, have they got that ability to go this is a really threatening island time. There are times now when we are going to blitz. And you might say, no, no, if you're blitzing, you're blitzing the whole time. I think a good side finds a way to go, we don't have to blitz all the time. And you go, well... Then there's you that. Have to, well, it's so, but, but there'd be really interesting systems to put in place. I just think that seven points that they gave to Scotland, when the game was starting to have real control, Scotland were as bad as they'd been. Uh, would that be fair to say first 20 minutes? First 19 minutes, they scored in 19 minutes, 50 seconds. Bad as they've been, they were, couldn't get out, kept dropping balls, and we then caught it from them. But that's seven points that they gave out. And then when Duane van der Merwe scores that wonder try from a turnover, they pressed again. Don't press on turnovers. For his hat trick, we get bust up the middle, we've got a narrow defence, we press again. And it's just, I mean, up Finn Russell had a three and a half thousand square meters he could have put it in. If you're interesting, if you pause the pause the video as Finn kicks, half the team are pressing and then a couple of lads who are going, we shouldn't be pressing here, a corner flagging and it's like a defense coach's nightmare when you've got two lads running one way and two lads running the other. So you're right, maybe, and that's why you add up, you've got to be patient with what's going on. But I do think, and I don't think it's a case of half pregnant. I think there are real times when we go, lads, we are all in here. Bang. But there are moments in the game against Ireland where you think we just we I would say to them, okay, it's 38 minutes on the clock and England are winning 10-3 and, and Ireland have a, have a scrum on the left hand side, right, just before half time. You might go, no, keep going, keep blitzing, keep blitzing. I might go, that's I'm a, on the cautious side here. Let's get to half time at 10-3 up. Let's have some unsettlement. Let's just go for a nice square press, do what they want to do. 
and bundle them. And you go, you, you can't. Do, I think good players should be able to understand when we keep going and we keep going and keep going. And then there are times when this is not the right time for a relatively new system to go all in against a great team. Interesting. But th there's a few things that are, f are going to be easy wins for England. Like, I know Ireland had a good scrum game against Wales, but you know it, it's not an area necessarily that you would you know hang your hat on for Ireland. It's you know traditionally uh, an area that England could perform in. So set piece dominant. We've already spoken about the line out. It'd be a, a significant piece. Go after Ireland in the air. You know I'm, I'm not suggesting there's a, vul a massive vulnerability there, but England have been quite good. They've England been have been quite there, good. Um, I'm not sure if. Um, if um, it's, it's going to be um, Frawley or not, a full-back, it may, it may still be. He's good, but he's only played one um, Six Nations game. Um, so it's potentially they're miss, missing uh, Mike Hansen as well. Um, um, there is a, the, the pressure we've seen Ireland can't or, or they tend to overplay when there's a huge amount of pressure and they can't get into the system they want off multi-phase. They can get knocked behind the gain line. And that's where your point is, is is really smart as well that you don't maybe don't double blitz under those, get the blitz, get them behind the gain line, fan out. What are you going to do, guys? You're going to overplay. Then can get yourself into trouble again because Ireland don't have a brilliant kicking game in the middle third. Don't have a great offensive kicking game. So sort of lean into that and make them play phases and potentially phases behind the gain line, and keep your system. And then the other th thing, Ireland have an excellent exit strategy, but they are, there is a good chance they can get blocked down. So you can see who their kickers are. They use a hu they use low massively. His left foot boot. You send a shooter on low. He's vulnerable if not hit behind the gain line. He's a little bit slow in the way he kicks through. You get a block down. Crowley as well as uh, has been blocked down a couple of times. He's a little bit slow and sometimes he gets a bit too flat to kick the ball away. All of a sudden, you know, you've got an opportunity. You've got opportunities. Stop dropping the ball. I know that sounds mm. crazy, <laughs> but like actually you limit your I hear that on Sundays in Richmond Park. <laughs> the amount of the amount of um, you know, if you limit your errors offensively as well, that ke keeps you in the game. What else happens? You know, just on that someone gets sent off, someone gets a yellow card, change yeah. the perspective of the game. It's, this is a game that's, you know, for England, it's not like a slam dunk for Ireland. Yeah, sympathy. G give the, the, how do you stop people dropping? Give people early touches on where they want. Understand that I think there was one which came off Ben Earl's shoulder that Slade was going out the back. We knew we were going out the back. There's no need to be that tight to Henry on the short there. And it's just give you. Don't let perfect get in the way of good. Right. In the first 15, 20 minutes. You don't have to go all the way to the line and pull off the perfect play. Your set piece play is great. Fine. Go for it. Stretch the limits. Right, right on the edge. Because you have to, to break a first phase deal. But in phase play, don't be afraid of a slightly earlier ball. Um, and, and giving everyone that opportunity to play and, and get involved and get their first touch. In. I mean, it's, the reality is we're not reinventing the wheel here. Yeah, we're just trying to make sure. I think England would England would hope if they had one thing that every fan would want it. Can England be in the game at half yeah. time? Give yourself a chance to win the game. That's what they need yeah, to do. Totally. Box clever. Two questions on Ireland. How worried are you about this game out of ten? Honest answer. Um, Three. I'm. Four, I'm. Five, I'm, <laughs> I'm. My pre uh, disposition is to be really worried about all games. But um, you know, even going into that, and the great example of that is going into that French game. I thought. No, so this is this is a game Ireland shouldn't be winning. It's you know it's against France. That's see that yeah, but they, come on, you know. But no, it's, but but uh, and down in the south of France, and you kind of there's I'm hardwired to be sort of sort of you know negative. negative. Yeah, Wire it, yeah, it is, and I've got those scars there. You know, I've brought them through with me, um, and then I think it becomes um, you know more difficult again than Twickenham. But I do think Ireland will win the game. I think they're favourites. They're right to be favourites. I think uh, you know we could you could see one or two Englands. You know if we saw. Uh, and England, the amount of mistakes that we saw against Scotland, um, you see the Twickenham crowd getting on top of them, which so I, 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 think think I think you're right. I think the Twickenham crowd is a hair trigger. Yeah. They are ready to go after this team if they don't start well and keep going well. And that will be a negative. That'll be, a, that'll be an issue for them because that gets in on teams. So um, if that becomes a factor, then... You know, Ireland are very, very comfortable delivering their game plan. They don't make a huge amount of errors. Comfortable They're chasing if England go 10, 17, I don't, 6 They up? don't chase, actually. They don't chase. They're but are they comfortable being they just, they just let it go. They just let it go. And next thing, all of a sudden, they're back in the game because they con continue to do what, they, you know, what they're, they've planned to do and they, take, they generally take the right options. That can be disrupted. 
Yeah. Like it can be disrupted, I and mean, Ireland have been disrupted by by a couple of teams. But generally, you know, they are the most comfortable, most professional Ireland team there's ever been. Yeah, and you know, talk about chasing. I mean, we know in 2019 they went. I mean, it was 29 nil. There was no way you can chase from 29 nil against New Zealand in the quarter final. I brought the notes I made from the quarter final, and you forget England went. Uh, England Ireland went 13 nil down. They were 13 nil down to the All Blacks in this quarter final. Yeah. Again, slow start. I don't know if it's the pressure. It's like the All Blacks and a couple of couple of, a couple of lineouts went awry early on. Uh, emotion, a couple of daft penalties got up ahead of it. It's the All Blacks, but the, you know they found a way to fight them well back in. And when is it? 16. Uh, Keller gets held up over the line on the 69th minute. Geordie, yeah. Geordie Barrett. I mean, geez, are you kidding me? Um, the All Blacks win a scrum pen with seven men, but Ireland are back in it at 25-24. It was all Ireland, all Ireland. In the second half, and it, that won't help them to think about it like that because they go, oh, "How did we?" Yeah. But in terms of comfortable chasing, what I see there is you're in a World Cup quarter final, 13 nil down to the All Blacks. The proof is in the pudding. I said, "Well, shut up." They lost. They put themselves. They got themselves back into a game where most teams just collapse and fold and walk yeah. away. Uh, so um, I, I, I think they can chase. I think England just have to be. Again, spot on, word perfect, win 80% of the aerial battles, 50-50 balls on the floor, um, shut down that line out and and explore a little bit with the ball. I know it's, it's not saying mixed messages win the aerial battle, but you have to look as though you're going to play at times. You have to try and raise the tempo at times. If we just go, I'm not saying park the bus, but if we just go data, this is what we do, I think, Ireland find a way to win. Just looking at the overall tournament this year, and we were muttering about this before we started recording, have Ireland raised the bar or have the others dropped the bar? <laughs> yeah, well, you know... 80, it's, there's, there's points this is what you have to say. It has to be if Ireland are doing well, it has well, to be everybody else. Oh, okay, well, no, France, <laughs> France have fallen off a cliff. Yeah, yeah. no, listen... They're off a cliff. Um, I mean, they could end up bottom. They Wales were, beat them. Uh, you know, there's a stat. Wales beat them. France were 100 to 1 for the wooden spoon. And I mean, you say Wales beat them. I mean, that leaves them England, England, France, France, England, rather in the last round, which is but what we play for. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, <what's> sooner. <laughs> um, Let's come to that next week, shall we? <laughs> um, there is, um, I think, Ireland have been extremely consistent. They've built on last year. Last year was, you know, a very good Six Nations in preparation of the World Cup. You know, they won the Grand Slam. They have. They're the team that has held their form, and they've held their form at a very high level. Yeah. Um, and the changes that they've made. Um, you know, you you couldn't say uh, Crowley has made the team better because it's Sexton, but he's he hasn't made it discernibly worse. Your kid Joe, McCarthy, Joe McCarthy oh, wow. has made the team better. And what like, what a man off the field as well. Yeah, what a yeah, he, just he a is great, very character. interesting guy. But yeah, he, McCarthy and, and Byrne is a combo. Yeah. There's not a lot they can't. You might say, well, let's have a go at them in the line, which England will do. But mm. like, oh, they're you, you're looking at their skill sets. That's another string to the bow. That like he is he is an ex, you know a massive um, second row in the sort of of the stature, physical stature that Ireland don't produce. We produce a different type of second row, a very good second row. But he's almost like a South African second row, and the way he carries the ball, he you know he's got good footwork, and he's just smashed his way into that team. He's displaced. Um, James Ryan. Ryan and Henderson. Yeah. Henderson was the captain of the Lions, wasn't he, for, for one, of the, one, of the, one of the games, certainly midweek. Midweek, yeah. John Ryan was being spoken about as a potential Lions captain at one point. He's like, a, he was... James Ryan. James, James, Ryan sorry, yeah. James Ryan. He hadn't, he hadn't um, I think he, of his first 20 games for Ireland, I think didn't, he almost won everyone. He didn't, lose. Lose. He didn't, he didn't lose. lose in a season. So, uh, and th that hasn't been a, a change that has, you know, we need to change tactics. That is, I'm coming in. I'm taken over, and that's what he's done. So I think Ireland are continuing to play at a very high level. There has been a drop off in the other teams. Let's see where England are at the weekend. Can I but Wales aren't great, you know. Let's see again that last game against Scotland. That could be an, all of a sudden an interesting game. Mm. Um, Italy, that was probably a decent performance for them against Ireland. In retrospect, wasn't yeah. it? And they look like half, you know, they're they're performing in a, in a reasonable way. France, you know, fell off a cliff, but also I think that first game Ireland pushed them off the cliff. Can I just do our Continental Tires question of the week, which comes from Barber 99 They are our sponsor. No. <laughs> We're a great sponsor. If you spot it, <laughs> we're going to brand your forehead for the next episode. Um, well, Hask has actually changed his name. He's now James Continental <laughs> for the next 12 months. Um, Barber 99 how many of the England team would get into this current Ireland setup? So, uh, uh, back line. 
Well, which England? What's you see? This is the difficulty. We don't know what in the England team is. Well, Freeman's going to okay, play. Well, we'll pick yeah. England yeah. players yeah. from the smallest board of England. Freeman's going to play. So could Freeman get in front of Nash, who's been only a couple of games and he's looked great? But I'm trying to find. Yeah. You know, Jameson Gibson Park Crowley at the moment. Shoeins. Yeah. Aki Henshaw. You know, in a different, in a you know, a different world, could you see? Um, um, he's a ten who's back fit. Uh, Marcus, Marcus, Smith. Marcus Smith, you know, could, what would he be like in an Irish setup? You think? Yes. Like, I think he's a remarkable talent. We're, we don't know about Crowley yet. I think he's doing well. Yeah. He's very good. I like a lot about him. Like the, the way he attacks the line flat. He's got real bottle, which is ma really important in a ten. And he's done. He's done really well. And he could be. We don't know yet. But Marcus. Smith, we know, is a very high ceiling as well. Like is the question for this Saturday? Because if the question yeah, for this yeah, Saturday, yeah. Yes, you have yeah. to pick Crowley. Yeah, right? yeah. Right. So, yeah, well, so if the game this is this Saturday, Saturday I think yeah. Freeman yeah. in that setup would be decent. Yeah. Up front? Are you picking Nash? So short Are you picking the whole Irish bat line? Um, well, you could certainly make a case for it, couldn't right. you? Like, so, you, you know, so you low, are picking you would, low. You would pick low, without a doubt. Yeah. You, yeah, to be honest with you, any three three of the centres you would pick. Yeah. Uh, to three. Henshaw, ring, ring um, d you know, depends who who plays a full back potentially for England and for Ireland. Although I I really love Fra um, Frawley. I think he's a great player. And Keenan's. If it was Keenan, there's like Keenan's probably I think the best. Stuart or Furbank. Fullback maybe in the world. Keenan's the best know? fullback in the world. Okay. okay. So um, Freeman. Then, Freeman. Okay. Freeman. Okay. In right the back line. Up and then and then um, um, nine. Um, we go through the. I think we've got two props. I like. I'm sorry, we've got two hookers who are who are phenomenal, but I I really like Jamie George as a as a player. I think he's he's a brilliant player, but is he is he better than than Dan Sheehan? At the moment? Just we're just who, giving you enough rope here. Try yeah. We're just giving you yeah. enough rope. I know this is really <laughs> this is <laughs> killing me. Setup, this I'm is killing me. I'm yeah. I'm we're rolling this out next <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> Where's the lever? I'm getting. I want to get out of here. Um, um, it's not yeah. looking. It's not looking great, is it? No. Chesham, but again, we've just talked about McCarthy and Burn, and it doesn't get in. Doesn't <laughs> get in. You know. uh, you you know, best, who's our best player? Earl? I think Doris Earl, is a world I, 15 yeah, player. Yeah, but I, I think Earl is a quality player. I think he's got. Okay. I think Doris is. is, is but I mean, you might find a, a space for Earl maybe in the back row. Right. Um, I think he's oh, on the bench. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in the squad. <laughs> um, but like you, you even. But like this is just a snapshot because you know looking a Toji for the any time in the last X amount of years you'd go oh yeah, yeah. Toji would be in there yeah. but actually the way Byrne and McCarthy are playing at the moment you know they're maybe two of the best players yeah. so. Listen, th sure this might be very different after in a week's not, time. I was going to say, I'm not sure we can pin a podcast to a changing room notice board, but it's that sort of proverbial listen to what they've said. I know, I think to go and you, make a point. I've been brought here on this. Well, you've done a brilliant job. Yeah. You've fallen into the trap. Yeah, That's I have. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> like I've, I've jumped into the boat here. Two cads yeah. have surrounded <laughs> yeah. you so like you, Flashman. Just to extrapolate that question, how many England players go on a Lions tour tomorrow? Uh, Freeman. Smith. Marrow. Smith. Um, marrow has got a fight for his slot right now. Needs a massive game against these guys. You might say, well, so w where else? Where else are you looking? Uh, I think Beard. I think I know Will Rowland's on the bench. Can't get in. He's outstanding. Kept out behind Daffy Jenkins. I think Marrow, in all likelihood, goes. But it's not an absolute guaranteed trade. If England win three games in the rest of 2024, how do you pick yeah. many of them? I, I, I <laughs> is not a trap. I'll tell you what. Left no, foot in one. Do you want to put your right no, foot in the I'll other? Tell you, I'll tell you what this made me think of when we went down. I think it was 2004, the summer of 2004. No, it was 2004. Yeah, I think it was. We went down to play the Springboks, and we we played them down there, and we were kind of in both games, but we lost both games. And Jake White was the coach at the time, and the Springboks were coming to Dublin in the autumn series. And he was asked, you know, who, you know, this exact, you know, rope dope, um, how many Irish players would get in in the team? And he said, "Oh, well, I wouldn't have any of the Irish players," which is kind of a legitimate thing to say if you're the coach of the Springboks. And I remember how passionate we were before that game. I don't think I've ever been as riled up before a game. I, I honestly, whatever it, it hit, and the way he said it, it just hit a nerve and an emotion that meant that. And we know rugby is not all about passion, and the modern game certainly isn't all about passion. But it's got a big deal and plays a big part. And I think it's maybe it's up to fifty percent of of what you need to deliver a performance. And we were we came out of the blocks like so fired up, like spitting blood. Yeah. And we beat them. 
and so I've just delivered the team yeah, talk. Yeah, well, there you are. <laughs> well, we'll Mitchell goes. Goes. Alex place. Mitchell goes. Yep. Ben Earl goes. Um, Another on, couple of games under, under his belt. Cunningham Destroy. South has a sniff. Your listenership is going to go through the roof with yeah. all the England's coaches. Or yeah. Lads, yeah. you've got to listen to GDR yeah, yeah. this week. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's 15, 23 maybe. 16 extra listeners. 16 Englishmen. I'm <laughs> <laughs> bringing it round. <laughs> I'm trying to give them some positivity. Do you know, it, I, love, I love it. It's such a... It's You've got all the cards in green. You've got a puncher's chance for, for England. What's, you've the book, got, what's the bookmakers mean? Well, I Plus thought they were 21-point start, but they've no, come in, I think, stop. is it? Yeah, it was last week, I think. That's silly. That's what Tin said. 12, is it? Uh, you said Wales beat France. Uh, With conviction. Yeah, I do. Curry, yeah. I do. I think, I think France are in a hole right now. If Jalibert, I don't know how bad his knee is. If Jalibert's gone. I don't know where they're going at 10. Yeah. Um, uh, Dante's gone. Yeah. Which gives, he was their p real point of difference in the World Cup. Uh, they missing certainly the build-up to the World Cup. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I think that young Welsh team at, home. Uh, at the Principality Stadium... We'll have a little look about what's going on in those boys in blue, and they will keep the tempo high all yeah. game. And I think I think they'll turn them over. I do. They'll throw yeah. a bit of ball. That's what yeah. they'll do. That's yeah. what. That's where they've had the most success. Um, I think. I still think it's. It would be tricky for them, but certainly not impossible. The interesting one is Scotland and Italy. Go on then. No, I know. I think. I think Scotland will win, and they should win. But is there something there? You know, is there something there? Uh, how, well, good, how good? We, we, I tell you, it'll be the barometer for the Italian My side. best punt this year was uh, Italy England game. Italy half time, England full time. Yeah. I could see that again. Really? Italy half time, no, Scotland full time. Just to get back to the point you were making about philosophy, England sort of creating a philosophy and then playing up to it. Uh, are you seeing that with Wales? They have they have sort of made a lot of noise about we're starting again here. Are you seeing yeah. something emerge? They've ripped the band aid and gone. It, we've got to. Uh, so if you then pick up on an indiv individual, I think their second row I've mentioned in terms of Lions context, I think they've got three great second rows and Daffy Jenkins will grow and grow and grow. Remember, they're 20 years old. J Jenkins, Beard and Rollins. That's a point of difference. Uh, our, their back row is outstanding. Yep. Uh, Wainwright, Rafael, and Mann is growing. He's 20 years old, so he's, he's, he's alongside two decent operators. Wainwright is a throwback. And you just think, how is he in the right place at the right time? Just... Awesome little player. I think um, Thomas Williams, I'd always, I've, I've rated him for, for donkey's years. Yeah. A scrapper. He's not perfect, but he's an absolute scrapper. Um, if Tompkins and North get their game right, there's there's edges you can find, but they're tough and niggly and high elbows and high knees and they're a couple of units. I love Dyer's work rate. I think Winnett's come in and gone punched above his weight yep. and has looked confident. I mean, you might say he didn't have a lot of choice, but he's, He's looking at the back of the field and he's taking, he's like, we want to put a fire out with him. And he's just moving around. He's got some shape on him. Uh, and Adams can score, score some points. You sort of go through that team and you go, wow. You're suddenly talking positively about a Welsh team. But at the start of the tournament, you're thinking, cracky, who are these kids? Yeah. And by having the game time Alex of Mann. 240 minutes together and a decent 60 minutes against England, yeah. When it's like we've got this, I think they're. Confidence. I think you're also seeing a mature coach who is comfortable in his own skin and totally Capable protected, of handling the flag, totally protected, right? Yeah. So he doesn't care, right? So he's gone in. He's you know, and even before the World Cup, he got away with some major players, but is totally stripped it out, gone for a totally young side. He said, "This is what we're going to do." He stated it. He's he's comfortable with doing it. And it's the difference between, you know, maybe Borthwick really t pulling off the bandage, as you said, or pulling out the plaster, and, and Gatlin being comfortable doing it. It's also the difference between coaching Wales and coaching England. It's yep. different. It's different, like the media attention, the, the sort of pressure that comes with the, not the expectation, but you're just given a little bit more. There's very high expectations for the Welsh rugby, we all know that, but, you know, there are fewer alternatives. Exactly. Now, and and there's a there's an understand better, more understanding. Whereas the problem with England is everybody's got an opinion because you've got so many players to choose from. In Ireland, there's never that big a controversy over selection because you know here and there around the edges a little bit. That's where the uh, you know where teams have been criticised or coaches have been criticised. Look at the end of Joe Smith. It wasn't yeah oh, Joe. You've got the whole you know you've got the selection totally wrong. It's actually you're not doing the right thing. With the players you have, that's not the case. You've got two um, conversations going side by side. You're not doing the right thing, and you're not doing the with the right players. Very interesting. 
That's why we love the Six Nations, isn't it? Just before we finish, it's time for our Haycar Six Nations selector, where we delve into the past and we try to pick the greatest players to have played in the Six Nations. You'll love this, Will. It's right up your street. Haycar only have the best quality check used vehicles. You can buy directly online or in person through one of their trusted retailers. They even have vehicles you can't find or buy anywhere else. Like our relationship with Haycar, this game's all about great partnerships, so our picks have to be made in units. Don't look at me quizzically. Go with me on this. You've got to pick on units. I was thinking, when did you sell out? Oh, we sold out years ago. <laughs> but I'm driving around in a roller, yeah. so, you know, it works, doesn't it? Uh, bought by Haycar, ironically. <laughs> Very, good. Very good, too. Uh, we are picking the back three today, um, and they all have to play together for the same nation. Another kicker. Our team six nations or pre-six nations? No, like all post six nations. And, and we have to have a unit from each of the countries, okay? So there are two positional units left to fill, the second row and the back three. We're going to give you the back three for obvious reasons. Although you Are we make, doing this You've actually made quite a good second row partnership, the two of you, actually. <laughs> Are we doing this now? Skills -wise. Yes, you're doing no. it now. Sit up straight and concentrate. So far, we've picked our front row, our back row, our half-backs and our centres. So Le Cicero, Giraldini and Castro Giovanni. Great for the after party. Yeah. <laughs> Each of them test insurance. They didn't win a lot, but great unit. Hilbat Delalio is our back row. Yeah. Dupont and Tamak were our halfbacks. And I'm afraid Darcy and O'Driscoll got in in the centres. Well, but we've just seen should be Hogan yeah. in yeah. O'Driscoll. Yeah. Yeah. You should have given Hogan. me a stat yeah. 10 minutes yeah. ago that says yeah. he's six from seven we, with an 88% win rate. Sorry, Gordon, you're out. It's now Hogan <laughs> and Darcy the, in the centres. Did the 89% win rate not count? No, it didn't. No. no. Tins, I think, wasn't able to vote for himself. Oh. Uh, so that means we can't have any of the following. Noel Watson-Brown, who won the Grand Slam in 2016, or Lucy Robinson and Cohen. Oh, actually, they only started twice together, so you couldn't really have them either. Uh, in Ireland, it could have been Hickey, Hawk and Dempsey, 12 starts together, 10 wins. You had some good win <laughs> ratios, didn't you? We'll get that flashed up next time you're on the telly box. 83% win ratio. Um, Fitzgerald, Bo and Carney won the 2009 Grand Slam. You can't have them either. And oh, for no. France, Dominici, Clerk and Brusque, 04 Grand Slam. Brusque, VM Nicola Jaminet Brusque. with a 2022 Grand Slam. What was the last one? Jaminet, who else? Uh, Villiers, Peno, and Jaminet, 22 Grand Slam. Why couldn't we? Why couldn't I have? Um... Because we've already picked Darcy and O'Driscoll in our centres, oh, which right. means that you can't pick an Irish back three. All oh, right, because we, we can't, can't pick, pick an English back three or Scotland. So what's the Wales back three I can pick? I'm going to give you the options now. Uh, Adams, North, and uh, Williams. 2019 Grand Slam, very pick good. Up. North Cuthbert and Halfpenny, two championships, 2012 Grand Slam at 2013, 11 from 14 wins. Shane Williams, Mark Jones and Lee Byrne, 2008 Grand Slam. Those are your oh, Wales options. Do you, know why I like, do you know what I like them? Nice. Combined weight, probably 140 yeah, kilos. Yeah, they were good. They were good. <laughs> Post Mark Jones made me look like Hercules. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, from Scotland, you can have Lamont, Patterson or Southall, Hugo Southwell. Highest win percentage as a, f a unit, four wins from nine starts. Tough, tough you laughing? Don't <laughs> laugh. They beat us. They winning the Gold Cup the whole yeah, time. You just, true. You just right. mocked yeah, okay. a Scottish I didn't mock the jock. You I did. just was. You did. Just <laughs> <laughs> cough. You sniggered. Or you, you can snoddled. Have, <laughs> you can have Hogg, Maitland, and Van der Merwe, the 2021 back three that won at Twickenham for the first time since 1983. So North Cup at Harpenny, Adams, North or Williams, Shane Williams, Mark Jones, Ollie Byrne, Lamont, Pass and South, Hugo Southwell, or Hogg, Maitland, and Van der Merwe. So. Do we need a goal kicker? Who's at 10? Uh, and Tamak. Right, in which case we need to, you got to pick, it, it, we're picking a team, hey, but, uh, considering the other people who've already picked that nine and 10, yeah. you've got you've got to have a goal kicker. Yeah, you? half penny. So you've got to pick the back three with half penny. In. Yeah. If okay. you're not picking a goal kicker and you're saying, it doesn't matter, we score tries, uh, I might, let, it's, I might go Adams North Williams, because... Are you not giving Intermac the chance to kick goals? No, he'll miss. Cause, okay. But half penny wouldn't miss. Half penny so, wouldn't so, miss. Sorry, could miss. Yeah. Half penny wouldn't um, Although Lee Byrne was real fun as a fullback, wasn't he? Yeah, he was a great player. Y you make the decision. Are you going to? You, you, the the, the pressure view, is on you. If I want ballers, I'm yeah. going to play Adams I'd North Williams. Li I'd go the Williams one. Adams Liam. North Williams. Yeah. Let's go ballers. Let's not die wondering. And that means we're going to have a Scottish second row pairing, which will probably be the Grey brothers. Grey brothers. Yeah, we might flex the rules on that, actually. <laughs> Stay tuned for next week. What's their uh, win ratio? Well, I don't know, but it's, it's a lovely family affair, and that's what we're all about. Well done, Adams, North, and Williams. They go into our team. A lot of tries between those three. Yeah. And Shane. Crack, how we left Shane? No, we've got to have Shane's one in, haven't we? We've got to have Shane in. Do you, want a, do you want a late change? Yeah. Can't, can't, Sorry, not, what, can't what, have Shane. What, what, what was Shane's one? Shane with Halfpenny and... No, Shane no. with Mark Jones and Lee Byrne, 2008 Grand Slam. Ooh, yeah, it's tricky. Oh, is Shane not with the others? No. That was Liam Williams, 2019 Grand Slam. Yeah. Or you could have North Cuthbert and Halfpenny from 2012 and uh, 2013 England game as well. That's still, I think, the highest. What, watermark, what? 
31-3. North Northcuth, but half penny. The only bat three to win two See, championships. That's, 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 that's got to be it. Right? And then you get your goalkeeper and as well. And you got well. the goalkeeper. Yeah, yeah. So, so sorry, right Josh goal. Adams and Liam Williams. You are scrapped. But George, you go through to the next round alongside Alex Cuthbert and Lee Halfpenny. Selecting a car from Haycar is much easier process than we've just been through. They only have the best quality check used vehicles and you can buy directly online or in person through one of their trusted retailers. Buy your next car the feel-good way with Haycar. Right, you've, you've dug yourself a deep enough hole. We're going to finish with a prediction, please. So we'll do Italy, Scotland, first of all. Who and by how many? Scotland um, by four. Maybe slightly more in the end, Scotland, I think. Okay. Scotland by ten. England against With a bonus Ireland. point, you were saying. Yeah. Scotland scoring yeah. fourth. With a bonus kick. point. So that one available Saturday afternoon, 2.15, ITV and Virgin Media. Saturday at 4.45, ITV and RTE, England against Ireland. Shane, please. I think it's going to be Ireland by 12. Will Greenwood. I think I'd re revise that down to three. England by three? <laughs> no, Ireland, Ireland by, by three. three, yeah. Why? I don't know. Are you just giving caveat options no, here? So I that just, you no, I'm going to revise it down to three because, um, yeah, big wins in Twickenham Trick don't happen that often. France round four last year would... Oh my god! Oh my god! For that Ireland. was so bad, wasn't it? Um, that is a, that is a hangover as well in this round. Twenty twenty four is a year of positives. We've got one big game in us, and I think it's competitive to sixty minutes. Yeah, that's not the exam that question. That's not the <laughs> exam <laughs> question. No. question. That's here's the question um, you wanted to ask me, but I I have answered. I think uh, Ireland by five. England by one, just for the sake of it. Yeah. And Wales against France, Sunday afternoon, three o'clock, BBC and RT. Game of the weekend, no defence. Four is there, is the roof on forty four thirty seven in a jamboree that <laughs> Wales win. <laughs> Swallow your roast beef on that. I luck, we've never had this much consideration ever. Can I just say Do you at know this point, any chance again any of these questions with more than like two seconds notice during the so, pod? So can well, actually consider it. So it's a rugby pod. What are you expecting <laughs> we're gonna talk about? It's not exactly breaking news that we're gonna ask you what I you know, think's okay. gonna happen. Okay. Sorry, Shane, we'll send you a much more detailed brief next week. Please come with some uh, thoughts and views uh, okay. on Let's what might happen this week. On, on the games Discuss. that are happening the, the, yeah. the, the next week. And also you made a very you compelling do, you, case there for, for Wales. I think that's what's thrown me. Um and again, it's like my own arm. I always, I always default to, to France winning. But um, you've convinced me. Right. Wales, bye. Seven, seven. Uh, big game this weekend as well. England against Ireland in the Legends fixture. And would you believe it? No, your old mate Tins is still trucking it up. Wow. And, and, I mean, it's incredible. He loves it. Friday night, the game is at, uh, the Stoop. And if you fancy going, you get tickets at quins.co.uk. Do you fancy that? You're quite fit. You're still sort of lithe and busting your gut, aren't you? Yeah, I run around. I just, I've had too many, uh, too many operations. It's too to, expensive to put yourself back together. I, that view and a doctor saying count to ten and never getting past four. I've said I don't, I don't. I'm not that keen anymore. Really? What was your last one? Uh, shoulder. shoulder. Six of them. So I just, yeah, no interest. I I hurt my back oh, yesterday. Oh, <laughs> try to frighten my child in the park. <laughs> <laughs> That's the level of fitness is, uh, the fitness that I have at the moment. <laughs> and on that bombshell. Talk us through it. How? Well, I was hiding behind a bush. He was coming <laughs> around. I was hiding behind a bush. <laughs> and I left it. And, ah! <laughs> Stretch it out of the playground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which counts for you in Bermondsey? Somewhere like that. No, no, I was in uh, Victoria Park. So uh, if anyone's got footage, that, if everyone's got footage, please yeah. send it. Isn't in. that a lovely juxtaposition to the glory of scoring a match-winning oh, try in the listen, 79th minute in that's the top it. right yeah, corner of Twickenham? Fall, it's a long way down. Getting wheelchaired out of the park <laughs> from the soft play area. Um, well, and on, that, and on that bombshell, um, it's been really good fun. I love the history. Sorry for the surprises on the predictions. <laughs> um, we, we like to catch you out as you go. Um, very interesting. It is a puncher's chance, though, isn't it? Could it? Yeah. Might it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Look, so. You know how you never back against France. This is why I find it difficult. I just go, it's Twickenham. I just, go, how can we keep going in the game's second favourites at Twickenham? And I just feel there's a massive game. There's a massive game yeah. in there that can, that can, there's absolutely a chance. Absolutely there's a chance. Great. I have a feeling I'm going to be got back. <laughs> if if England yeah, win, yeah. it's like if we'll Ireland win for next Monday. If, if Ireland win, no. If England win, it's like yeah. yeah. We'll just replay all the clips yeah. that you've. So I'll have to week. talk through the next podcast. will be talking through yes, the last yes. podcast. Therapy. 
Well done, fellas. Great fun. Thank you very much indeed. We have been the good, the bad and the rugby in partnership, as always, with our very good friends at Continental Tyres. Stats and facts provided by Oval Insights. We're a folding pocket production. This episode was produced by Tom Edwards. Enjoy all that's to come this weekend and we'll see you for a debrief next week. Bye for now.